How long should you cook your ribs? I'm talking slow and low barbecue here, indirect heat. We're using an offset smoker. Same thing applies if you're using a pellet grill. I'm gonna do three racks of ribs. One for four hours, another rack for five hours, another rack for six hours. I'm gonna let you see the difference between these ribs and how they change over those last few hours of cooking. Also in this video, I'm gonna show you the secret on how to get the absolutely most perfect ribs and what exactly the most perfect rib is. Later on, when we're all done here, if you like what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. This is Tony Tone Barbecue. Thanks for watching. Let's get to work. Okay, time to get this party started. All right, here's what we're cooking. Three slabs, pork spare ribs, already pre-trimmed to St. Louis style. I got three that were as close as possible to the same uh, weight. So this one is 3.56 pounds. This one is 3.58 pounds. And this one is 3.72 pounds. All right, we're using lump coal to get the fire started, to get the offset smoker heated up. It's ready to go, get that in there. There we go. But we're actually gonna be cooking with oak wood like this. Reason we're doing the lump coal is just to get the heat built and establish a coal bed. We're gonna warm up the smoker with it this way and then, uh, but from now on after this, just oak wood. Okay, doing my usual technique here of having the burning wood over here on the right side of the firebox with the next pieces of wood that are gonna go into the fire over here between the burning pile of wood and the cooking chamber. So these are gonna get really hot before they go onto the fire bed, onto the coal bed, which will make them light up and burn cleanly really quickly. We're gonna go ahead and close this lid. So the rest of the offset smoker is prepped and ready to go. We're just gonna let this heat build up. I've got the air intake over here wide open and I've got the exhaust over here wide open. So we're gonna get some nice airflow, airflow going through here and uh, get this temperature up quickly. All right, it's 81 degrees at 9.30 this beautiful Sunday morning. It's going to be getting up to about 100 degrees by the time the, uh, all these ribs are done cooking at 4 p.m. I'm gonna be getting these on by 10 a.m. here. What we're working with is the Char Griller Grand Champ, very budget friendly, very basic offset smoker that you can pick up at uh, your local hardware store. Uh, you might see a link here or something where you might be able to find one, but uh, these are a great way to get started without breaking the bank on one of those $5,000 monster rigs. That let's, let's be real, how many of us are actually using these things enough <laughs> to need something like that? This is a great offset smoker. It's gonna do a fantastic job, you'll see. All right, it's 10 o'clock and the first slab of ribs is ready to go on. They're all gonna be prepped exactly the same way. I've removed the membrane. They've got a nice little dusting here of a rub that I whipped up, which uh, kind of keep it simple. It's just uh, fresh ground pepper and brown sugar, cayenne pepper, ground mustard, and uh, garlic powder. And yeah, that's it. Um, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple that way. That way they all come out by the same. This is just a little trimming that I, that I slip cut off the end over here where there's no bone or anything in it. But what's nice about these things here is since it's a long cook, I'm going to get hungry along the way and this will be a nice little snack in a minute. Okay, I've got the first rack of ribs laid out here in the offset smoker. You can see it's pretty much right in the middle there. There's my little snack that I'm going to get in about a, well, I'll probably take that when I throw in the next rack. We'll see. I don't know. And uh, I've got a temperature probe back here so I can monitor the temperature remotely. I'm going to be closing this and I'm going to maintain a temperature of around the range of 225 degrees. It's going to fluctuate. It's going to go uh, up and down. And really, that doesn't matter. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, if I'm within about 20, 25 degrees, either way of that temperature, I'm looking good. So that's what we're going to do. So it's just after 10 o'clock and the first rack of ribs is in. How we're going to do this is every hour for the next two hours, I'm going to be putting in another slab of ribs. That way, they will all come off at the same time. They'll come off at four o'clock and one will have cooked for six hours. The other will cook for five hours and the last one will, be have cooked, will have been cooked for four hours. And you'll be able to see the difference between each of them. So the next slab of rib goes in at 11 o'clock. Okay, it's 11 o'clock and it's time to get the next slab of ribs on. Same thing, same rub, let's go. Okay, this is the second rack of ribs. I went ahead and moved the original one that was right here. I moved it over to here. So this is the gonna be the six hour rack. And uh, then when I add the next one too, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move them both over a little bit and keep going. All right, it's just after 
We're uh, currently at 235 degrees inside the cooking chamber. You can see that. It's uh, 91 degrees outside. It's a beautiful day today. And I promised you that I was going to tell you the secret to getting perfect ribs. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. The secret of perfect ribs is right inside that box right there. It's getting super comfortable and super familiar, flat out just best friends with your fire. If you're running an offset smoker, that can be a little tricky, but all it takes is practice. You need to be so stinking comfortable with what's going on inside this firebox that you're not afraid to walk away and just let it go for half an hour without even checking on it. You have to be super comfortable with it. And honestly, that's the secret to cooking anything in an offset smoker. Once you get really, really comfortable with what's going on in this firebox, you can totally cook anything because most of the time folks are stressing about that temperature inside there. They're stressing about the smoke that's coming out of the stack and whether it's clean or dirty. They're stressing about the temperature because sometimes it's down low to 215 degrees. Sometimes it's way up 300 degrees. What you got to understand is the temperature is going to fluctuate. On any cooking appliance, even your oven inside, the temperature is going to go up and down. I guarantee you, you put a probe inside your oven and watch what happens. The, you're looking for a average temperature. And how oh, shoot, I mean, most of the time, even with ribs, if my target temperature is 225, I'm probably more like 240, 250, you know, sometimes up as high as 265 before it starts coming back down because every time I add a new piece of wood in there, the temperature is going to go up naturally because it's a bigger piece of wood. It's going to be burning more. I've got my other pieces of wood over here on standby. It's almost time to put another piece on there because you can see that coal bed starting to quiet down a little bit. And when I put a new piece of wood on there, it's going to flame up and the temperature by the time I do that might be at 210 degrees, put a piece of wood in there and jumps right up to 260 degrees. And then it just starts settling down, coming back down to 255, 250, 230, 225, 215, 210, add another piece of wood. That's totally okay. That's totally normal. It's not going to ruin your cook. The thing that I'm concerned the most about is just making sure that it's burning nice and cleanly so that I'm getting good quality smoke coming out of there. It means I'm not leaving a bunch of soot deposits on the meat, which makes it taste like way too smoky, like an ashtray. I don't care for that. But uh, I, I just want the flavor from the wood that I'm burning. That's what I love about cooking with an offset smoker is that it really infuses your meat with the flavor of whatever wood you're cooking. I'm using oak today. That's all that's burning right down in there. That's all that I have on standby ready to go. I have not added any more lump coal. I'm not adding charcoal or anything like that. Just oak wood. Oak is one of my favorites. I also love hickory. You know, get, get familiar with the woods in your area, though. I have an abundant supply of oak where I live, so I, that's why I burn most of the time, and it works out great. But get familiar with the wood that's in your area and use it. Just get so comfortable with doing it, though. Practice it. Practice burning the fire before you even uh, start cooking food. Just get totally comfortable with it. And then I guarantee you everything else is going to be super easy. I don't care if you're cooking chicken or ribs or brisket or lamb or whatever, because if you're not stressing about what's happening over there, you can focus on what's going on over there and you can do other stuff too. You don't have to be hanging out by your smoker all day long. Just leave it alone. Go do other things. Go have fun. All right. So I told you I was going to tell you how to get perfect ribs. I also promised to tell you what perfect rib actually is. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Perfect ribs are however you like it. That's it. I don't care if you like uh, cooking them for six hours straight or four hours. I don't care if you like to wrap them. I don't care if you want to do the three, two, one method. I don't care if you like to boil them first, okay? A perfect rib is whatever you like putting in your mouth. Or ask yourself a question, okay? Who are you cooking for? Are you cooking for yourself? Are you cooking for your friends, your family? Are you cooking for a competition, okay? If you're cooking for a competition, then the perfect rib is whatever's going to win you the prize, whatever the heck that is, you know? Okay, you're cooking for the judges. Maybe you're going to cook it in a way that you don't really care for. Well, that's the goal. That's the goal. But if you're cooking for yourself, do what you like, okay? I'm not here to tell you what the perfect rib is. I'm here to help you get whatever you think the perfect rib is. And like I said before, that firebox right over there is key. 
get super familiar with that fire so you can relax and be comfortable and do whatever it is you like doing. Season the ribs with whatever you like to put on them. Me personally, I kind of like to keep it simple with the rubs. I'm not overpowering my ribs with a bunch of other flavors. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to eat ribs, not looking to eat a bunch of other stuff. And I do like sauce, but I, don't, I typically don't put sauce on when I'm smoking them. I like to make a sauce that I can use on the side. I got a really great uh, pineapple barbecue sauce that I'm going to be using for these a little bit later, um, but it's going to be added on afterwards. You know, that way it's optional but do what you like, okay? It doesn't matter. Anybody that's telling you that, you know, the three, two, one method is wrong, don't do it. They're full of, they're full of it, okay? They're trying to sell you something. I don't know, whatever, all right? If you like the three, two, one, do the three, two, one. I personally love the three, two, one. I don't do it all the time. I do whatever I want, whatever I feel like doing, and that's what you should do too, okay? I hate those videos that say like, you've been cooking and doing this wrong the whole, you know, uh, Okay, well, it's <laughs> driving me crazy. I hate all that. Anyways, so have fun with it, all right? Enjoy yourself. Cook your food the way you like to eat it. Just make sure it's cooked safely, all right? You know, don't, <laughs> just make sure it's done right. That's it. But have fun, enjoy yourself. And um, I'm going to get this last rack of ribs on here in just a few minutes. We're going to finish cooking, and um, then I'm going to pull them all off at the same time so we can see the difference between a six-hour rack of ribs, a five-hour rack of ribs, and a four-hour rack of ribs, just strictly for your own personal information so you can look at these things and see, help make a decision for yourself if you're cooking this style, how long you want to cook them. But I highly encourage you to go ahead and experiment and do it yourself, okay? Just in case you notice, something going on with my neck over here. I was riding my motorcycle yesterday and nailed a bee, and yeah, it was its little gift that left me. It's a nice stinger in the neck. What are you gonna do? Just keeping it real. Okay, it's 11 o'clock. Let's go ahead and get this last rack of ribs on. Okay, there it is. That's the new one. This is the one that I put on the earliest. So this one's gonna be six hours. This is the five hour rack, and this is the going to be the four hour rack, just freshly on there. I also pulled off my little snack, so I'm gonna have some lunch now. So now, four hours. I am not gonna open this lid again. I'm gonna let it cook and finish up. Okay, it's four o'clock. Time to check out these ribs. Let's see what we got. Well, here we are. Six hours. Five hours four hours. So I'm going to let these rest for about 30 minutes and then we're going to start cutting them up and checking them out. Okay, this is the fun part, at least for me anyways. Four hours, five hours, six hours. Let's start off by looking at the exterior differences. Um, overall, they, they look pretty similar. Um, you know, there's not a huge difference in color or anything. Let's uh, go ahead and pick one up here. We'll talk about flexibility as one of the things we look for. And this one after four hours, it's it's got some nice little bounce to it. And uh, overall, pretty flexible. This is the underside. Uh, notice there's not a lot of bone showing over here. Uh, the when, when I put these on, when they were raw, there was already a little tiny bit of bone sticking out here from the way it was trimmed, but that, that's it. It's uh, generally, that's it. Uh, the five hour ones, interesting. This one seems to be a little less flexible. Still also not a lot of bone showing over here. Yeah, uh, there's the bottom, okay. And then the six hour, this one, just looking at it, it kind of looks like it's the meat has kind of shrunk up a bit more. I kind of see more bumps here in the surface. Uh, we definitely have more bone showing over here. You can see as the meat just kind of shrinks up and kind of pulls back a little bit, you get more exposed bone. Um, as far as flexibility is concerned, um, it it's, seems a, bit, a little bit more flexible than the five hour. Maybe not as quite as flexible as the four hour, but does that really mean anything? It does it really? I don't know. Um, you see the surface there. It actually looks like it's going to kind of fall apart a lot easier. So we'll be able to tell uh, a little bit more when we cut into it. There's the bottom. You have a look at that. So overall, that's, that's a nice looking rack of ribs there. So let's go ahead and cut these right down the middle, each one. And we'll kind of create a little more space on my, my board here. Knife, 
Oh, wait, wait. Are we spo supposed to do that, right? Okay, and then a little, a little of this. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I did that. So, <laughs> oh no. Um, let's go ahead and just write down the center of this uh, five hour, I'm sorry, four hour rack here. And uh, we'll set this aside. All right, and then the five hour rack. Okay, get between the bones there, there we go. All right. Let's uh, we'll keep that half, set this half aside. There we go. And the six hour. There we go. We'll keep this half, I'll set this half aside. All right. Well, so you can see, that's what it looks like on the four hour cook. That's what the meat looks like on the five hour cook. And this is what the meat looks like on the six hour cook. Uh, let's go ahead and get a little deeper still. Cut a couple individual ribs here. All right, those are four hour ribs right there. Uh, these are five hour ribs here. And can't see what I'm doing here. Hit the bone. There it goes. And six hour ribs here. Okay. Well, first let's have a look at the the five hour ribs. Now uh, we're supposed to squeeze it right. A little squishy there. Squeeze out a little juice. <laughs> All right. It's definitely you know spongy. It's pretty. It's another another four hour. Okay. Give it a little squeeze. All right. It's nice nice color. Now let's get a close up of the five hour ribs. Okay. Should we squeeze that also? Do that whole squeeze thing. There we go. It uh, looks good. All right, that's the five hours. And uh, the six hour ribs. We'll close up there. Squeezy, squeezy. Oh, juice is kind of dripping out of there. Making a mess on my table. It's okay. It's stainless steel. It cleans. All right. So now that you've seen, I wish you could taste it. I wish you could test it yourself. I guess I'm going to have to do that for you. So we'll start off with these uh, four-hour ribs. Now, I apologize in advance, but this is where things start getting a little ugly, a little messy. I tend to take really big bites because I get all excited. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do nice little nibbles here. Four hour rib. What I'm what I'm wondering is uh, how difficult it is to take this meat off this bone, how clean the bone becomes, and um, you know what it's what's like chewing it. Um, looking for tenderness, juiciness, all that good stuff. So here we go. Mm. <laughs> Mm. God, I love my job. <laughs> mm. That is freaking delicious.
Okay. Well, that is... Oh, that's good. All right. I'm going to stop there. And now I'm going to pick up one of the five-hour ribs. And um, we'll see if I notice any, any difference here. Hmm. That was a little bit of a bigger bite because, I mean, this is kind of a thicker rib. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pause there. Now I'm going to grab one of the six hour ribs here. We'll try this out. My gosh, that is good. Yeah, I'll tell you, that rub that I make, I actually use um, the um, peppercorn medley, it's the peppercorns that are all different colors, and I put it in a nut and spice grinder. So I I grind that pepper fresh, and it makes a difference. It's I, I feel these little bits of pepper, and it's so tasty and really, really, just really good. Mmm. Oh. Wow. Okay. So now that um, I've had uh, about a half of a rib for each of these here, let's have a, a closer look and give you some of my thoughts. All right. So as far as moisture content, none of these were dry. I mean, this is the six-hour rib, and it is, it is juicy. It is not dry at all. It's really good. Um, probably at the point, though, where if I gave it another hour, it would probably start drying up. This one actually seems to be dripping the most juice. So what's happening here is the fat content, all the fat that's inside this rib, is really starting to liquefy and starting to pour out. If we let it go another hour, you'd really start, start to see the meat start to pull back even further on these bones as the, the meat shrinks up, as that fat kind of exits. And if you let it go for too long, you end up with a pretty dry rib. This is phenomenal. Um, this guy here, also still very juicy, um, very tender. All Actually, all three of these really tender. Um, this one here, uh, juicy, tender. As far as tenderness is concerned, they're very, very close to each other. Um, usually one of the indicators is how clean the bone comes. How does it just, does meat just literally fall right off the bone? When you're, if you're, if you're wrapping your ribs, if you're doing like a three, two, one method where you wrap it in aluminum foil for a couple hours, um, because you're, you're basically kind of like braising it in this, in this foil packet. Um, it makes the meat super tender where it really shrinks up quickly and, and starts to, um, come off the bone a lot, like to the point where you can like just pull it off and make sandwiches out of it. Um, when you are not wrapping it though, and the moisture is kind of leaving the meat, 
it does take longer for that to happen and um, it's the, the meat will stick to the bone a little bit more but if you notice each of these gets progressively cleaner with time here this one you know just the normal bite kind of seems to have left behind the most little bits of meat on the bone although not much I mean, you can barely tell the difference this one also came out pretty clean but still stuck a little bit and this one is the cleanest obviously and, and it's it will just slide off of there hmm will this one slide off <laughs> all right gopro got too hot and shut down on me so I had to take a quick little break anyways as i was saying um this one definitely is the cleanest and whereas this one this doesn't really seem to want to do what the other one did where the meat just easily pulls right off of the off the bone it's it's coming off but the other one was super easy to make that happen so you can see the difference hmm how about this one no let's try this way No, this one's not having it. So, bottom line. Are they cooked? Yes, they're all cooked. They're all edible. They all taste great. I don't really notice a difference in flavor between any of them. They're all fantastic. The rub I use, if you want to know, um, for three racks of ribs, I do three tablespoons of peppercorns, grind them up, and then I add three tablespoons, three ribs, three tablespoons of brown sugar, and uh, one teaspoon of mus uh, ground mustard, um, one teaspoon, two, three teaspoons of cayenne pepper, and no more than one teaspoon of salt. Um, that way it's these can kind of become over salty so i like to go really low on the salt and um oh and uh three teaspoons of garlic powder and uh, grind that out mix that all up together comes out phenomenal sweet a little bit of spiciness very nice um bottom line is cook your ribs however you like them me personally which one is my favorite that's tough it's tough to say between this one the five hours and the six hours definitely not the four hours the four hours is good but i like the meat to come off the bone a little a little bit easier um so right, it's nice but i think i'd honestly have to pick the six hours now every cook's going to be a little bit different too you know these were pretty good size ribs what was it three and a half pounds 3.75 pounds if you had a two and a half pound rack of ribs, four to five hours would probably be more than enough. Five hours max would probably be like this. So keep that in mind. Also, you know, uh, sometimes your, your atmosphere has has uh, an effect on it um, and what you're cooking with. This um, Char Griller Grand Champ is a pretty decent little offset smoker. Um, ran it well, did a nice job, but um, Sometimes things are, are different. So, you know, you, you have to become really familiar, like I was saying before, with your rig, your fire, um, get familiar with that, and then you can make that decision on how, on what you want to do. So, it's that, oh, oh, my barbecue sauce I was telling you about. This is how I like to do barbecue sauce. This is a Hawaiian pineapple and um, ginger barbecue sauce. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. We're good here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching this. I really appreciate you. This has been a lot of fun. Please send me your comments, your questions. If you like what you saw here, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Tell me if there's something you want to see me do. I've been 
thinking of uh, toying with a lot of ideas in my head. I've even been thinking about doing maybe a live stream, see if I can come up with something that y'all would like to see. Um, I might even create the opportunity to make a uh, video replies, you know, via uh, YouTube shorts, because I'd like to do a few shorts, but I, and I don't want to do this these weird things where it's just a bunch of pretty pictures and doesn't really tell you anything, but if I can provide some actual good information that'll help you up your barbecue game via YouTube shorts, I would love to be able to do that for you. So this has been fun. Thanks again for being here. Um, this has been Tony Tone BBQ. Pork ribs are freaking fantastic. Enjoy. Take care.